So to start out with, we're going to have our hook and we're going to hook this on the unit. A lot of people just throw the hook in, but the problem is the back side of this hook damages those fins. So you want to make sure that your hook goes in, around, and then back out. That way it doesn't cause any damage to the fins. Some people also prefer to put the hook around the very top side. However it is, you want to make sure you don't damage the paint or damage the aluminum fins. Now there's other types of hooks. We have this wider hook here. We can put this in, swivel it, and bring it around as well. Now we're hooked on the unit. We're not gonna worry about our gauges falling. We can see it and we're not damaging the fence. So we're gonna hook up our gauges on the suction side first. Notice the unit's not running. It really doesn't matter if the unit's running or not. If the unit's running, I like to keep it running. If it's off, I wanna put my gauges on before I start it. I wanna make sure that there is some refrigerant before I start the system up. We're gonna start by taking off this valve cap, make sure there's a rubber O-ring in there. I wanna take my hose off the manifold gauge set. This is very important. I wanna put this cap right here so it doesn't get lost. I see a lot of techs that'll take and put them on the ground. They'll vibrate over or get dirt stuck in there. And then when you put it back on, you get dirt into the valve core and it causes problems or for the next guy gauges. Also, I've seen people where they put it on top of the unit. The problem is that they'll vibrate over into the fan and the fan will either shoot it out, damage the fan blade, lose the cap, or in a worst case scenario, actually bust out a customer's kitchen window. And yes, that happened with a helper of mine. So we're gonna put it right here where it's protected, it's clean, it's out of the way. Now we're gonna take our low loss fitting and we're gonna put it on this port. And I'm gonna to touch it with only two fingers, front and back, side to side, either way with two fingers. Because if refrigerant shoots out, it's gonna come out the front or the very back. This way I'm protected. Now, while we're doing this, some people prefer to use gloves. If you use gloves, you have to use refrigerant rated butylene lined gloves. You can't just simply use gloves like this because they're made of a cloth type material. The problem with this is liquid refrigerant soaks into this material and as it boils from a liquid to vapor, it literally freezes your hand to the glove and it causes more damage. So I prefer not to use gloves at all, but I am not an OSHA instructor. Two fingers, critical. We put it on with the two finger method. Now this is low pressure vapor, so it's going to be the easy one to put on. If you notice there, hardly any sound at all. Now I want to tighten this up. A lot of people stop prematurely when they're working in the, when they're new to the field. So what we're going to do is make sure that we tighten it and I'll actually move the hose this way, tighten it some more, move the hose this way, tighten it some more until I get it on there nice and tight. You want to make sure it's actually showing pressure. I've had a lot of students before they get in the class, they just put it on to where it just starts to get snug and then they stop and they wonder why there's no pressure showing. So this way we're now firmly on the connection. We didn't lose any refrigerant whatsoever. Now we're going to do the same thing on the high side. Now here's a trick on this high side gauge. This is the one that's more likely to cause an issue. This is going to be high pressure liquid refrigerant. It's going to be changing state from a liquid to vapor. This is the one we have to be careful about. Now I'm going to do this the same way, but you're going to see the refrigerant shoot out because this fitting needs to be rebuilt. I'm still going to use the two finger method, front and back, and we're going to start tightening this up. Now you can see that liquid refrigerant shot out both ends. It shot out this way and that way. But because my fingers are right here in the center, it wasn't an issue. So you can see the liquid refrigerant actually boiling off. And there's actually oil in there as well. And that refrigerant's boiling out of the oil. We want to make sure we clean this up before we leave the job site. So now we have pressure in this gauge. Also important to note, when it started spraying, I didn't stop. When it starts spraying, you either go all the way on or all the way off. You can't just let it sit there and spray. Now, if it's getting liquid refrigerant on your hands, your safety is more important than the unit. But you think if you put it all the way on, you have your two fingers in the middle. It's usually not an issue. I've never had a problem with it. However, I have seen people before that are new to the trade and it starts leaking and they try to stop it with their hands. Never stop liquid refrigerant from shooting out with your hands. It will cause horrible, horrible, disgusting frostbite. But don't be afraid of it. It starts hissing, put it all the way on, take it all the way off, just like this one. Now this one needs to be rebuilt. If it was rebuilt, it would not be doing that. We have our system off and our pressures are fairly equal. Our suction pressure and our head pressure are the same. Remember head pressure is the high pressure side, red, that's the liquid line. And then the suction pressure, the vapor pressure, low side, it's the insulated line, the suction line. They are pretty well equal because it's equal as the compressor is not running. Now we're gonna turn the system on. 
Now we hear the compressor turn on and we see the pressure on the high side start to go up and the pressure on the low side starts to come down. The press compressor is sucking in low pressure vapor, pumping out high pressure vapor. On this side, it's the liquid only because it's after the condensing coil. So as you see, we have the high side and the low side. But what's more important about the pressure is the saturated temperature. So the saturated temperature on my high side right now is 80 and climbing. The saturated temperature inside at the evaporator coil is 44 and dropping. Ideally, you let the system run for about 15 minutes before you get a real solid baseline. It has time for the refrigerant to equalize to the system, to balance out before you get an accurate reading. But in this case, that's not our purpose. We wanna take the gauges on and off. Now, when the system is running, that's when I wanna take the gauges off. I don't wanna take it off with it sitting off. So let's start our process of taking the gauges off. I'm gonna start with the suction side. It's the least one we have to worry about. It's just vapor, it's not gonna hurt me. Still, I'm gonna use a two finger method two fingers, unscrew this. Now the refrigerant is held inside of this line. If we look at our manifold gauge set, we can see that it's holding the suction pressure in there. Now what I'm gonna do is loosen this. It's only vapor, low pressure vapor. It's called de minimis. So we're just gonna bleed that little bit of vapor out. De minimis charge, right? Only vapor, no big deal. Now I'm gonna take my valve cap off. I'm gonna hang on to it and I'm gonna put the hose, I'm gonna put the hose end back on this. I never wanna let this hit the ground. There's a little bit of oil in here. When that hits the ground, the oil sticks in there, causes these things to go bad. So I'm gonna put it on the manifold set to where it's hold it, it's clean, everything's ready to go. So we have zero PSI, or pretty close on our suction side. We're gonna screw that back in. Now we're gonna do the high side. So to do the high side, it's gonna be those same steps, except this has a bad high side fitting. So when I take this fitting loose, it's gonna spray some out, but it's gonna be okay because I'm only using two fingers. So let's go. And we're gonna do it quickly. The faster we do it, the better it's gonna be. So I take the pressure out of the high side. We lost a little bit of gas. We still have liquid inside of this hose. Now I cannot bleed it out of this hose because that's gonna be liquid refrigerant. That's gonna be an EPA violation. So we're gonna put the refrigerant back in we're gonna to have to put it in through the suction side while the system is running. So the valve cap on the suction side that I was holding, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the high side, but I'm gonna make sure that we have the rubber O-ring in there. As you can see, we do have a little rubber O-ring. So that's what we wanna make sure. We never wanna put it on without the rubber. So we're gonna thread that on. Now we have the refrigerant that's in the high side. We're gonna put this refrigerant back into the system. We cannot vent the refrigerant. It would be a waste of refrigerant we took from the customer's unit, and also it'd be an EPA violation. So we gotta put the refrigerant somewhere, and we're gonna put the refrigerant back into the system. Da -da 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 -da. System of a down, no? Okay, moving on. So I'm gonna hold this where you can see the pressure gauge, and you can see what happens when I put the hose onto the suction side. So here we go, we're gonna try this together. So I'm still gonna use two fingers. We have the pressure in here, we'll turn the light on. Now you can see the pressure start to drop because the high side ref the refrigerant from the high side hose is now being opened into the low side. I'm also going to raise this up so that if there's any liquid refrigerant in this hose, it'll all drain back into the system. And that's all it takes. Now a key point is this will not zero out. It's only going to go down to whatever the suction pressure was. It's not going to go down to zero. It's going to equalize what it was. The key is all of my liquid refrigerant is back into the system. So we're gonna unscrew this now. A Little bit of vapor came out, no big deal. Now I have this vapor in here. I don't wanna leave this vapor in the hose. If I put this vapor in the hose, I put this in the truck, the temperature of the truck gets high, sun shines on it, the pressure's gonna go up, it's gonna push on my sensors, it can bust my gauge. So I'm going to use a de minimis release Saw a little bit of oil come out, but it's just vapor. Now we're at zero PSI gauge. I'm gonna take my other valve cap. I'm gonna look to make sure there's an O-ring in there and there is a rubber O-ring in there. And we're gonna put this back on. In the next video, we're gonna talk about these valve caps. There's a lot we need to know about these valve caps and I do not like these plastic caps.